Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. Have you ever heard of child farming? Child farming. Well, if you haven't, this whole terrible experience of child farming will answer a lot of the questions for you, and it will explain some of the behaviors that you have seen in certain individuals throughout your life, okay? So what happened was, in typical British colonizer devilish fashion, these white people, these British white people who had absolutely nothing and couldn't make it in the world on their own, they went to Nigeria in like the year of 1851 to do their evil. People, if you know more, clear that up. Get smart down in the comments as far as, you know, the year and everything. But we do know for a fact that at some time in the 1800s, I believe it was 1851, the British white man went to West Africa, what we know as Nigeria now. Now, there was a leader by the name of Kosoko, okay, and... The British wanted to replace him with another man by the name of Akitoye, okay? Long story short, just to get to it, there's a big, long history behind these two leaders right here who were in Nigeria, but these dudes were some super coons, bottom line, working with Whitey, slave trade, all that. These dudes were just super coons, okay? So, the outcome... Whitey is there. Whitey, the British white man, is in this area in West Africa, what we know as Nigeria now. And eventually it was ruled by the British Empire from the mid-19th century until October of 1960. And that's when they say Nigeria uh, got their independence. So the white man was there doing their evil, and they say that they created you know, their own thing there and from the mid-19th century until 1960, okay? So it took them some years to lay down that foundation of the evil that they were doing. And, you know, they kept that going until October of 1960 when Nigeria achieved their independence. Now, whatever independence means, I mean, the damage is already done. This whole we got our independence thing means absolutely nothing. So they call it independence. So anyway, when they got their independence, so-called Nigerian people, they would go to Britain to look for work and for education, okay? They would go there after they got their independence. Why would they go there? Because the white man just washed them up in Nigeria, took everything where they're from, took all their resources, terrible life, and although they had their independence, yes, they're still going over to Britain to look for work and education because, of course, the white man still has, a, you know, has his boots bolted down in that area in Nigeria. So... Black people in Nigeria or Nigerian people were saying, well, let's let's go to the UK to have a better life. Let's go over here. We can go to school. We can get a job. And Britain offered that to them, that they can do that. So at the time that they allowed these Nigerians to do this, keep in mind the white folks in Britain, they had a failed economy. They needed an economy booster. So they figured we can get these Nigerians to come here work and go to school. We know that they're 10,000 times more gifted than us academically or in the sciences and everything else. And we could give them a job, let them go to school. Then we could act like we're doing something for them, give them an opportunity. But we really know we need them now, you know, and eventually they'll come. Uh, and they're only coming here because basically we went to their country already and washed them up, stole everything from them and brainwashed them. OK, so it all works out for the white man, of course. So these Nigerian families started to go to the UK heavy in the 50s, the 60s and the 70s, and they would bring their children with them. But the parents, they needed to focus on work and going to school in order to compete in that, you know, new environment over there. So they didn't have anybody to take care of their children. So they needed to get their work done, job, school, education, all that. 
And when these people had children, what they would do was they would pay white families to take their children as they went to school and work. They called this farming, people. They called this farming. So these Nigerians, uh, they would put ads in a local paper, you know, cute baby girl needs a home, little boy needs a place and things like that. And these British people who probably needed a few bucks as well, they figured, OK, let's bring a little black kid in. And these people, these Nigerian parents would give their babies up as early as six weeks to these white folks voluntarily. This was called farming people. And there are over 70,000 Nigerian children who went through this, over 70,000. And what's very interesting, as you can see, is the same white people who are the reason why they had absolutely nothing in their country, washed them up, colonized them, took their lives. Of course, there were people trying to fight, washed them up, got them out of here, stole all of their resources. They would give these people, these same people, their children, and pay them. How crazy. Listen, listen, the white, you, you got to I, I can't believe that people are this stupid. The white man does know how to do sorcery. The white man does sorcery, man. I mean, the, these programs, these brainwashing programs are just were just so effective in many ways all throughout the world, not just with Nigeria and this, this Britain thing. I'm talking about all throughout the world because you can't believe that people could be that dumb. The people, the same people who washed them up, colonized them, took everything from them, created a terrible life where they're from. They eventually go to these people's land who actually kind of need them at the time and pay and give them money and pay them and volunteer the most precious thing to them, their children. Absolutely nuts. OK, that was the trade off, people. So in the year of 1968, they reported that there were 5000 West African children from Nigeria, Nigeria who were f farmed by these British families in that year. That's just in one year, people. Again, the total was over 70,000. And these black parents and uh, these students of course, they dominated the field of education in Britain at that time. And, you know, these British people, they knew that these Nigerian students were 100 times smarter than them. And they will ultimately benefit from these Nigerian people being in their country. So it was a win-win for Whitey. You got them giving, you already washed them up. You got them giving your people money to take their kids and, and destroy their kids. We'll get to that. And yet it's going to be a win-win for you as far as them working in education. You know what I'm saying? So when these Nigerian parents gave up their children, this wasn't something that was like regulated or overseen by the government. It was just like put it in a newspaper. OK, let's swing a deal. Boom, boom. They didn't have this thing regulated. They just let them do it, add in the paper, you know, willingly. Agreement. How much you going to pay us? OK, let's go ahead. Parents gone, left their children there as early as weeks, people. Weeks. People, check out Ada BC right here. A term that was used by British social workers to describe a phenomenon that occurred in Britain after the Second World War, whereby the Nigerian immigrants coming to Britain would foster or farm their children out to white working class families. We're talking thousands and thousands of Nigerian children all over Britain in order so that they could work and study. And the idea was that, that once they'd accomplished what they set out to do, um, graduated, saved enough money, they would then collect their children and return to their native homes. That practice became known as farming. And I was farmed at the age of six. was uh, a term that was used by British social workers to describe a phenomenon that occurred in Britain after the Second World War, whereby the Nigerian immigrants coming to Britain would foster or farm their children out to white working class families. We're talking thousands of thousands of Nigerian children all over Britain in order so that they could work and study. And the idea was that, that once they'd accomplished what they set out to do, um, graduated, saved enough money, they would then collect their children and return to their native homes. That practice became known as farming. And I was farmed at the age of six weeks old to a white couple in the southeast of England about an hour and a half outside of London. The film, with the same title, follows my journey 
under that process. This was unique to Great Britain. It was. It's peculiar only to Britain and peculiar to only the Nigerian immigrants because at the time uh, Britain was going through an economic recession and it called upon its colonies, the West Indies, India and Africa to come and help rebuild it. So it was kind of like an expedient labor force. So how old were you when you were taken to this white couple? Six weeks old. And how old were you when you left? Sixteen. And you can imagine at six weeks old, uh, my white foster family were my family. My two siblings were with me, and uh, within the house there were another about seven or eight other Nigerian children from other families. So we all considered ourselves as a family and our foster families as our parents. And I just grew up there as you would in Britain during the 70s. The big difference, of course, being the area where we were placed, which was a town called Tilbury Town, uh, was notoriously racist and they'd never been exposed to black children or black people at all. So we were the first blacks to be, you know, placed in that environment. So it was a very racist right wing town. Okay, people, I know his real name isn't Adebisi in real life, but he'll always be Adebisi to many of us with that role. We can't, you can't unsee that role in eyes. I mean, dude was ruthless. At the time I was watching TV. Uh, okay, so Oz, y'all remember that? Yeah, anyway, he's one of them that was farmed. He's one of those children, you know? So he ain't making it up. This is real. And here's a very important aspect of this farming thing, people. What kind of psychological damage did it do to these uh, Nigerian children, these black children, for the rest of their lives, okay? There's no way that a black child who's in a home full of the same people who colonize them and don't even feel as though their lives are worth anything. There's no way that you could leave a child there and they'll be okay mentally or physically after that encounter, you know, one or the other. In my opinion, even the ones, because you know there are people who are going to say, oh, I was farmed and it was a great experience for me. It wasn't that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that because these people who would say that, I believe they are so desensitized to abuse and what's right and wrong that they don't even know what full access to humanity is based off of how these white people treated them, especially you went there at, you know, if you went at months, a few months, two months, a few weeks, you know, you have become accustomed to being this. You know what I mean? So what kind of abuse were these black children dealing with in these houses, people? OK, but there are plenty of these farmed children who are well into adulthood now who are finally, you know, talk about this, talking about this terrible experience, this abuse and damage that they went through at the hands of a decision that their parents made and these white supremacists in Britain. Could you imagine the self-hating coons that came out of that era, people? Could you imagine that? Many of these kids were abused, you know, terrorized racially by entire neighborhoods, sexually abused, beaten up physically, okay? People went through all that. You know, many of them who went through that speak of, you know, feelings of confusion, isolation, grief, rejection, abandonment, you know, generational trauma, all that. You may just imagine, you know, these hooligan cracker gangs throughout your whole youth, the entire neighborhood chasing you and doing things like that. And your white family, who your family is actually paying, never went outside to fight them for you. Just making excuses. Oh, we care about you, though. Now, here's another fact about this Nigerian British farming situation. And many of their people do not like to talk about it. Many of them brush this under the rug. Many Nigerian families do not like to discuss it. And I see why. It's a terrible thing because they volunteered this. You know what I mean? And the most that they got out of this was it may have helped one family live kind of like a normal life. That's it. Not, not even normal. You know what I mean? Like work. You're doing this to work and go to school. You know, so it's like that was the trade off. Like it didn't do anything to advance Nigeria whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, OK, well, we, you can go to America. You can live here. You can live here and do better. You know, you can have this regular life. But. You know, what did it really do ultimately? It was for the benefit of Whitey. Now, there are some Nigerian adults 
who were formed as children, just like the brother at BC who played at BC and Oz, uh, who are speaking out about this and this experience and what it has done to them. Actually, people, uh, the brother who played at BC and Oz that you just seen in the video, he made a movie about it called Farming, okay? He made a movie about it called Farming. I didn't see this movie, but it's been out a few years. You can check that out if you want. And it's a, mo it's a movie based off of his experiences or other people's experience in this whole farming thing in the UK, okay? But the movie is about how this Nigerian child was once bullied and beaten and terrorized by the, these British hooligan skinheads, right? He's getting terrorized by them daily, and he eventually started to love them, and he wanted to be part of them. OK, and this is somebody in real life, people based off a of real experience. So now you see why some people act the way they act and think the way that they think. You know what I mean? Experiences like that. And these are just the people who are coming out talking. You know how many children were farmed from Nigeria alone? You know what I mean? He said it was specifically a Nigerian British thing. Listen to the brother at BC in the video. You heard what he said specifically. There's a sister named Yawande, uh, uh, okay? A sister named Yawande, she's Nigerian, and she speaks out about her experience with this whole farming thing. She said she was beaten, tortured, and sexually abused at the age of four when placed with a white family. She said, the only memories that I have of that place is being be, living in fear, okay? That's it. She said, I remember one time I was beaten so badly that I pissed myself on the floor and I was made to lick it up. That's what these crackers did to her, y'all. She said, I remember them putting a cigarette out on my face. I remember sexual violation. I just remember darkness. Just dark the whole time. Dark. That's what she said. She said her memories of that time are sparse, but she says social services stepped in and she was taken to a children's home where it was horrific there because this children's home was a pedophile ring. She said, I grew up feeling abandoned. I remember just going into a phone box, picking up the phone and saying, Mommy, I promise I'll be good. Please, I promise we'll both be good. Please come get us. Come get us. So for anybody who says that they were farmed and they had a good experience and they want to use that to praise Whitey because they're one of the lucky ones who might have had a good experience at a house. You know, first off, I don't believe you. You know what I mean? In any way. This one story right here with this sister, Yuwande, who decided to speak out, that trumps anything that you could say. It don't matter no more because just this one story is enough. There's nothing that you can say. There's nothing that you can say to convince me or anybody else that your experience with Whitey was good as your parents paid people to abuse you, whether it be mentally, psychologically, physically, all three of them, whatever. You know what I mean? This is wild, yo. This is wild. So, people, this whole farming situation, it went on well into the 2000s. Of course, the numbers weren't as strong as they were in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and the 2000s, but that's what was going down, people. And, and, and look, man, most of these uh, farm children, they returned to their families, of course, damaged. And many of these children died, people. You got to remember that. Many of these children died. And imagine the parents who weren't such good people, who didn't really care to have their children back, might have been brainwashed, might have got a new white boyfriend, a white girlfriend. Yeah, who knows, man? And this is something that's really slipped under the rug in the Nigerian and British community. They don't like to talk about it, but many people, you know, Seal, the singer uh, at a BC right here, many other children, you know, they were farmed. They don't like to talk about this right here. But there are some that are coming out speaking more and more about their experiences with this farming thing. But look at so this answers a lot of questions you may have with specific people you may have met. Damn, now I see why. Right. But people, what do you know about this? If you want to get more specific with actual dates or give us, you know, more history on it in the comments. If you know about this, please do so. Anyway, easy.